All right, what's on the bench? Um, we have a mystery on the bench. Uh, I have this uh, oscillator here. I think it's been on the channel before, but it's 176.384 megahertz. Very uh, low phase noise, really nice, clean oscillator. Uh, and um, I was playing with it today and um, noticed it's pretty high output too, plus 13.7 dBm, so I have a, a 20 dB pad on it. Um, I put it on a spectrum analyzer and noticed there is a spur, and I thought, oh, okay, great, you know, that's just at uh, 2x frequency or something, or 3x frequency, something or other, right? 176.4, okay, that's fine. That second peak there is at 284.4. Does it make any sense to you? Um, let's, uh, let's do some math on it. All right, let's see here. We've got one, oops, we've got, uh, 176.4, and we've got 264.4. Let's subtract them. That's 88 megahertz difference. Okay, let's. Uh, let's divide them. 176.4. Uh, 264.4. Let's divide them. Uh, one third? Let's see. One and a half. One and a half? How's that one and a half? One and a half. 176.38 times two, no, one and a half times one and a half. 176.38 times 1.5. Okay, one and a half. Gosh, my brain's not working today. Uh, Bueller, any help? Uh, why do we have a harmonic at one and a half times the frequency? I'm just, uh, maybe my brain's not working right, but that doesn't make no sense to me. So I came over here to the oscilloscope because uh, it can do fast stuff. And I've got the output. It's a nice sine wave. It's really clean. It should be because it's got no harmonic structure, right? Except for that weird one and a half. Anyway, looks like a nice, a nice pretty sine wave. All right. And then I've turned on an FFT down here. And uh, so we've got this nice spike of FFT. And right over there is that spur again. So it's showing up on both my regular spectrum analyzer and the FFT on the oscilloscope. This one shows a couple extra ones. So, you know, whenever you see a weird spur that you don't quite understand, you might think maybe it's from something else. Or it's internal. So let's disconnect the, uh, let's disconnect the signal. And we have some down here. They might be radio stations or something. You never know. Um, and if I put it back in, that one shows up. Hmm. I don't know. I don't see that one on the other oscilloscope, but I do see it. I mean, the other spec analyzer, but I do see it here. All right. So, um, Let's open this up and see if it isn't like a, a strange direct digital synthesis chip or something, or whether it's just a simple transistor oscillator, like a coal pits or something, right? Or a heart layer, one of those things, you know the ones. Uh, let's open it up and take a look inside. All right, got my favorite screwdriver set here. And uh, let's find some appropriate size bits. That's a pretty good one there. Let's try this one. Okay, that's a snug fit. That's a good one. So we will, we will use technology here to uh, save my, save my wrists. Okay, let me get a box. Oops. Put this in the box.
Okay, you might be wondering, why do they put so many screws in RF boxes? Well, that's because you're only making good contact at every screw. In between, there might be a little gap in there, you never know. And so you have to do the measurement between the screws, and that sets the uh, wavelength of, of, of uh, RF that can get through that gap. And so if your screwed screw spacing is less than a quarter of a wavelength or half wavelength or something, anyway, some, some multiple of the wavelength, you're not gonna get extra stuff out or extra stuff in. And uh, sometimes you put it in RF grommet that, that fixes that for you. But if you just have screws, you put in a whole bunch of them. That's why there is. And so let's take a look inside. Oh, look at that. Looks like there's a, an oven controlled crystal in there. Huh. Well, there is quite a bit of stuff in there. This, let's, uh, let, me, uh, let me come down though. All right, so we've got uh, what looks to be a 12 volt regulator. So the, on the on the uh, printing on this thing, it says use 15 volts. So that goes into a 12 volt regulator. So we have a nice clean 12 volts inside the thing. And then we have four adjustments, one, two, three, four potentiometers. And there is Oh, no, that's just a tantalum. I think it's just, I think it's just resist, uh, transistors. I don't think there's anything funny going on. There's a, uh, a floating, floating uh, crystal in there. And then there's this trimmer, trimmer capacitor here. This is a plug in the end that you can remove. Oh, can you see that? No, you can't. Anyway, there's a plug in the end that you can remove to, to tweak the crystal. And I think that's probably done at the manufacturer. And then that plug is put in there so you can't fool it up. Um, yeah, a little, a little coax down to the PC board. There's some inductors and stuff etched on the PC board. It's not a PC board. It's, it's an alumina substrate. It's a ceramic substrate. Um, yeah. Let's uh, let's uh, put this under the microscope, and I'll give you a better better look at it. I have a better microscope's a better camera for that. All right, here we are under the microscope. It looks nicer. Uh, here we have the seventy eight twelve regulator, and so uh, that comes in over on this pin. And that pin comes into this red wire. The red wire goes all the way across and goes over to, over to here. Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, we got some cool inductory type, RF type of stuff in here. Lots of little funny little capacitors and stuff. Pretty ugly construction, I have to say. Pretty, pretty ugly construction. I would have invested in a Metcalc <laughs> Metcal soldering iron. I think you'd get better results. But anyway, there you go. Um, yeah, I'll try to give you a side view here so you can kind of see there's stuff under there. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just a couple SOT23 transistors in there and that's just it. So uh, I don't see a mechanism to get one half, one and one half for the frequency. There's a cool little, um, little spongy thing here. Uh, I don't know if that's just an insulator block. It looked kind of like, just like, um, phenolic. Uh, and the transistor has that weird, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it heated directly. I think it just warms up and it just kind of becomes a little oven in there just because of everything else that's running. I don't think it has a, a heater circuit. Uh, comment below if you think I'm wrong. Yeah, a bunch of. Look at that, look at that solder joint down there. You see that one? That one, uh, 
that one right there. I guess it's okay. I don't know. Soldering's not really great on this thing. And then why do you have four adjustments? Wow. Four adjustments. And they have been uh, gooped over, so uh, they've been adjusted and then put goop on it. So it's like, don't touch those again. They've already been done. I don't know. There you go. All right. Well, um, comment below why you think there's a spur at one and a half the frequency or is one and a half a red herring and it's just some uh, something else. There's a magic RF that leaks in from somewhere in space. I, I don't know.